Hello, and welcome to the Northampton Methodist Circuit of Churches YouTube channel. This message is for the 28th of June, but we're glad that you're joining us any time. We've been following the story of Ruth this month, and today we arrive at the final chapter, the final episode, if you like. I find myself resonating with the story of Ruth and Naomi in another way. We are looking at chapter 4, the last episode, but this week I find myself back in chapter 1, with Naomi and Ruth in their bereavement. On Wednesday we held my mother's funeral. Three brothers and their wives gathered round a grave. It was a special, intimate family occasion uh, and a fond remembering. Amazingly, the minister included a brief thought from Ruth and Bible Month in his address, one of his favourite books, he told us. And what a story. Elimelech and Naomi took their family off to a pagan country seeking food because of a famine, but it proved quite unfruitful. Naomi returned home to Bethlehem a widow, declaring that the Lord had brought her home. Her daughter-in-law, Ruth, came with her, also widowed, having made a covenant commitment to Naomi that your people shall be my people and your God, my God. How about that? A pagan Moabite committing in faith to the God of Israel. When we were thinking about chapter one, Brian talked about God working behind the scenes. And so it has proved to be. In the next episode, Ruth just so happened to find herself working in a field belonging to Boaz, who just happened to be a family relative and a godly man who looked after Ruth with kindness and generosity and ensured that Naomi was looked after too. He made sure there was extra grain left for her to pick up and Ruth ended up working two successive harvests in Boaz fields. Next, Naomi gets Ruth to visit Boaz at the threshing floor and uses a traditional action from the law to drop a heavy hint that she wouldn't mind if he wanted to marry her. She's not allowed to ask him. In this final chapter, so many things that were broken at the beginning of the story, by contrast, are now restored, redeemed. Boaz deals with the family politics, a somewhat closer in line to take on the estate, oh, and Naomi and Ruth. And that someone remains unnamed and loses his sandal all to his shame, in contrast with Honourable Boaz. Boaz marries Ruth and, after ten years of unfruitfulness in Moab, now comes fruitfulness, as God gives her and Boaz a son, Obed, which means he serves, provider, guardian. All the prayers of blessing are fulfilled from Boaz over Ruth, may the Lord reward you in chapter 2, may you be blessed by the Lord in chapter 3, and of the elders that the Lord make Ruth like Rachel and Leah, Jacob's wives, and Boaz to prosper and be famous in Bethlehem, and the women of the town too, may this child be famous in Israel, and Naomi who was empty, is now fulfilled as a grandparent. At Mum's funeral, the minister spoke of Ruth being about ordinariness, goodness, decency, from which marriage comes, children come, and the genealogy then lists those who follow, leading to King David and for us to the Messiah, Jesus Christ. The minister said he would remember Christine for her special ordinariness as a good person, kind, inclusive, welcoming to people. 
And this short genealogy invites us to realise that this simple love story is also about God's providence at work, not just for Naomi, Ruth and Boaz, but for generations to follow. Ultimately, the redeeming of the world through Jesus Christ. Let us note the remarkable things that our God can do through ordinary people of faith. May we be encouraged by Ruth and Boaz to live godly lives of kindness, grace, selflessness, loyalty. For we never know what the Lord will do behind the scenes to bring his purposes for the completion of his redeeming of his world. Let's pray. But loving God, thank you for the story of Ruth and Boaz and Naomi and for the way that you were at work in their lives when they realised it and when it seemed rather unlikely. Thank you that we can know the same thing, that you are at work in our hearts and lives, that you carry us, that you watch over us, that you have a purpose and a plan for each one of us, even if we may feel our lives are quite ordinary. Help us nevertheless to live in the power of your Holy Spirit by faith. After the likeness of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus the Christ, we ask in his name.